morning. I'm so tired that like I cannot even. So last night, well, first of all, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Coffee Talk. Welcome to Sleepy Talk. I'm so tired. Last night at 1.30 in the morning, I woke up from a horrible dream. Like a, like a nightmare. And um, now I want to make it a movie because it was so scary that it woke me up out of my sleep and scared the crap out of me. And the woman's name in the, in my dream, her name I think was, I think it was Shandri or something, but it was so scary. Oh my God. So this morning I'm going to sing for you a song from when I was in high school. All right, I'm not actually going to sing like a whole song. <laughs> no, I'm going to sing part of a song. Um, the lead singer of Soundgarden died last night. He was 52 years old. And when I used to be in high school and I played soccer, we would sit on the bus and drive the bus would take us to whatever school we were playing and I would listen to Spoon Man in my earphones, 1994, 93, 94. My dad had died and there was something very comforting about Soundgarden to me. It was very sort of grungy, but I don't know if you guys know the song, but Chris Cornell is the name of the guy who passed away. and. I used to listen to Spoonman all the time. And I can't really sing, but I'm going to sing it for you so you know what song I'm talking about. It goes like this. Spoonman, come together with your hands, save me. I don't know if you guys know that song, but um, they sung Black Hole Sun, Won't You Come. Um... Soundgarden was so good. If you get a chance later, Google Soundgarden if you don't know them and listen to Spoon Man. Gives me the butterflies, gives me a way till I'm up on my feet again. Um, anyway, I really love them. I think that was plush that I just sung. Um, I can't think, but I love Soundgarden and I loved Chris Cornell. So if you can get a chance later, check him out. He's really, really good. Um, all right. So I want to tell you about this very interesting conversation that I had with my friend last night when we were having a drink. Um, and, um, and I realized something very, uh, important about people. My friend and I were talking and she was talking to me. I said to her, how are you so like balanced? You know, you never, um, I mean, she gets angry, but she, well, she and I have been friends a long time. We lived together for a short period of time when Michael and I were just dating and I needed a place to stay in Birmingham. And, um, and uh, she was a wild child, you know, she was so different. And now she's so um, stable. And she said, I said, is it marriage? And she said, no, it isn't ma my marriage that changed me. It was stability. There is something incredibly stabilizing and safe about stability. And I thought, that is so unbelievably true. If you look at um, people who commit petty crimes, breaking into cars and things like that, I'm not talking about murder, 
because I don't have a, I can't, my mind can't go there. Most of them ha don't have stability. That's what's missing from their life. They live in fear of where the next meal will come from or where the next whatever. And again, obviously there are drug users and things like that, but I think most of the time when people act out, it is because they are lacking stability somewhere in their life. Stability can change you. It can bring a safe, a safety and a peace to your life that will change you. So I started to look at the people in my life who don't act right. And I realized that their foundation is not stable. It's hanging on by a thread. When people treat you poorly or neglect your relationship or whatever, if you take a good look at them, if you take a really good look at where they're coming from, you will see that they lack stability somewhere in their life. Either their marriage is not on the right track, they, they're dealing with something with their kids, something with their parents, like there is something that changes a person about stability. People who are unstable in their lives, and I'm not talking about mentally unstable, I'm just talking about un instability that brings insecurity. They always feel like they're a mess. They desperately want stability. They just, it's, it's just outside their grasp. And because of that, they don't, have like good self-esteem about who and where they are. So they are more reckless with their behavior. If you look at um, my girlfriend's husband had an affair. The girl that he was having an affair with was like 22 and like they lived in, um, where do they live? Just outside Vegas. This girl's like 22 sleeping on a friend's couch, works nights. So my girlfriend was like, what does she have that I don't have? I'm like, are you kidding? This kid is a train wreck. She has no stability. She is making these decisions because she has no stability. If she had peace and safety in her life, she wouldn't be looking for your husband because you know what they say all these men out here you want to get killed over mine do you really want to get killed over mine I don't do you really want to get beat up over mine don't think so just kidding I'm not even that chick anymore um, but it starts from children it starts from when we are children the the most well-rounded adults are people who had stability in their lives when they were children if you look at children who lacked stability growing up, they struggle as adults. They struggle to feel safe. They struggle to find peace. They struggle to make good decisions. Stability is everything. It is so powerful. It has the power to completely transform a woman. So many women thrive in new, in new marriages, right? And people think, or, or they don't thrive in the marriages that they're in and people think marriage is not for them. That's not it. You cannot function in a marriage with no stability. You just can't. You can't function in a friendship with no stability. You can't function in a relationship with your mother if there is no stability. If you never know who you're gonna get on the other end of the phone when you speak to your mother, how can you ever have peace about that relationship? It's, it's not possible. It's not possible. If every time your husband comes home and throws his keys on the table, you don't know if you're getting the happy husband, the abusive husband, the husband full of accusations, you don't know. Um, that will lead a woman, that will make her crazy. I'm telling you right now, emotional instability will make you crazy. I'm not just talking about money. Sure, there are people who come from nothing and then they marry somebody that has a stable job and they start to feel much more at peace. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who live in an emotional whirlwind who finally get emotional stability. It changes you. 
really like I can remember in my first year of marriage I was pregnant with Olivia and one day I was going at Michael about something whatever and he started laughing and I I was like what are you laughing at and he was like I'm laughing at you with your constant attempts to push me away and I was like, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. He was like, yes, you are. He was like, Jamie, I'm not going anywhere. It's me and you. You're stuck with me. So like, we're going to die together. We're going to grow old together and we're going to die together no matter what we go through. So you could keep trying to push me away with your big belly, whatever. And he was like poking fun at me. And I thought, he's absolutely right. I am so used to relationships that are full of drama and fighting with no instability want with no stability that I am literally bringing those habits into this relationship because I don't assume this will be any different one of the things that Michael when I say Michael saved me one of the things he brought to me is stability you've got to look for it really you have to allow yourself to gravitate towards things that bring you peace even if they don't make sense to you Michael did not make sense to me, folks. He didn't look like anyone I had ever dated. He didn't act like anyone I had ever dated. He didn't make love like anyone I had ever dated. Like it was all so vanilla to me in, in general. And I kept thinking, how could this be what's good for me? This doesn't make any sense to me, but it feels so right. Like it feels so right. I was an incredibly self-destructive person. Michael was exactly what I needed. I finally said, like, I got to give this guy a chance because he feels so safe to me. And I want to feel safe. I deserve to feel safe. I have spent years, years not feeling safe. Years with no stability in my romantic relationships. Years of feeling like I was not enough for the men that I dated, that I was not skinny enough or sexy enough that I, I never had stability but I picked all the wrong men they couldn't give me stability they weren't stable themselves not to mention the fact that my father died and my mother was not did not bring an incredible amount of stability to me she really didn't she wanted to she tried to, but she struggled with it too. What changed me was the stability in my life, was the peace and the safety that I felt after so long. And I want you to extend that grace to the people around you. When people are struggling, look at their foundation. Guys, if you know they don't have stability somewhere in their life, they are not going to be the best version of themselves. People long for stability. They want it desperately. They just want to feel safe. That is all people want is a safe place to rest their head at night and not have to worry all the time. Living in a state of worry is awful. Ask any mother. She'll tell you. Um, for those of you who read my conversation with Olivia last night. I will do a video about that. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll talk to you about why I decided to talk to her and what my pediatrician said. Um, and you know how I'm dealing with it. But I thank everybody for reading it and sharing it because I share those things because you never know who else may need to hear them, right? Like somebody else may be living in total secrecy. And they read my piece and they go, oh my God, there's one other person out there who understands how I feel. Um, so if you go back to read my Facebook post from last night, you'll see what I, what I tried to talk to Olivia about for the first time. Um, anyway, there's a share button right there. You can hit share. Thank you, Danielle Nicole, for sharing my video. I appreciate you so much. Um, and if you want to find me on Instagram, you know that you can. It's Jamie P. Sullivan, J-A-I-M-E P. Sullivan. Always a good time on Instagram. Um, hold on, let's do the um, 
Oh my God, my eyes, I can't even keep them open. Just remember to have patience with people seeking stability. And if you can't make their day better, just don't make it worse. Because I can tell you living with no stability is one of the most debilitating emotional places to be. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're dealing with people who are trying to put their life back on the right, right track. Um, all right, I love you guys so much today. Have a great day.